Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Khauteng Muslim Shura Council invites you to a back to basic series, a commentary on the poem Nadmul Akhdari, a Maliki Fik masterpiece by Sidi Abdul Qadir Mandla Nkosi. Session 15. Naam, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan yuafi ni'amahu wa yukafi umazida. اللهم صلي وسلم بجميع الشؤون في الظهور والبطون على من منه الشقة الأسرار وانفلقت الأنوار نبينا وحبيبنا محمد سيد الأبرار وعلى آله الأخيار وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تلا اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا الكتاب والحكمة وانفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علم وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير نعم in our previous session we discussed uh, times of prayer and we said they are divided into two we have وقت العداء and we have وقت القضاء and we said وقت العداء is the prescribed or the set time for prayer. A time in which when a person performs it within this time frame, he has caught the prayer. And then we have waqtul qada, and this is the time in which salah is missed. And it's considered as performed outside its prescribed time. When praying at this time, you are in fact just paying back what you owe. However, waqtul ada the correct time is further divided into two. We have waqtul muhtar and waqtul daruri. And waqtul muhtar, this is the preferable or the chosen time, in fact the best time for prayer. As for waqtul daruri, it is inferior time, and salah is still within the prescribed time if performed at this instant. However, with a valid excuse. And I think we have mentioned that delaying prayers to this Daruri time without a valid reason is very sinful. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ayyu amali ahabbu ila Allah which act uh, is the most beloved to Allah to which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said as salatu ala waqtiha performing prayer at the prescribed time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishes those who pray when he says فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَّاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Woe unto those who pray, those who are unmindful of their prayers. And a lot of the commentators of the Qur'an say these are the people who delay their prayers beyond their prescribed time. Naam, we proceed, we are reading from page 37 and 38. قال المؤلف شيخ عبد الله الشنقتي ونفعنا الله به وبيكم آمين شروط الصلاة The conditions for prayer. When it comes to conditions of salah, they are divided into two. We have what is called شروط الوجوب, the conditions that make salah obligatory upon an individual, and شروط الصحة. And the condition that makes uh, salah valid. Now, our text, Nazm al Akhdari or Madn al Akhdari, does not talk about Shurut al Wujub, the conditions that make salah obligatory upon an individual, because he's already addressing a person who is a mukallaf and meets the conditions. And he's just teaching him how to do it. Uh, but for the sake of learning, we will mention some of them. And they can be found in another beginner's text we were blessed to translate a few years ago, Madan al Ashmawiyah. So, Shurutu Wujub, the conditions that make salah obligatory upon an individual, and they all have to be present at the same time. If not, then the obligation is lifted. And number one is Al-Islam, as soon as a person becomes Muslim. And the second one, he has attained puberty. And the third, he needs to be sane in mind, not uh, insane or anything of that sort. And the time for prayer should have entered. So you don't pray obligatory prayers when you feel like it. You pray them at their prescribed time. And lastly, having been reached 
by the message on the obligation of salah. So if any of the above mentioned conditions is not met, the obligation of salah is lifted. So back to our text, shurutu suha, the conditions for the validity of salah. Our poet says, Faslun shurutuha taharatu hadath wal badani wa thawbi wal makani min khabath. The conditions for salah are cleanliness from impurity, meaning a person must be in ritual purity, having performed the ghusul or wudu or tayammum. Wal badani wa thawbi wal makani min khabath. And the body, the clothes and the place of prayer should be clean from khabath, impurity such as urine, semen, blood or such. Our masters say in dhakara wa qadar, if he remembers or is able to remove these impurities by changing his clothes, for example, but if he's not able to, he prays anyway, as long as he has wudu, the clothes are secondary. Wasitrul awra, covering nakedness is a recommended condition as well. Thumma istiqbal, facing the qibla. The Kaaba, the most accurate is one can ever be. However, with us, the Qibla is a jiha, it's directional. If you are not able to face the Kaaba accurately, it will suffice to make a rough approximation to the direction of the Kaaba. وَتَرْكُوا قَوْلٍ وَكَثِيرِ الْأَفْعَالِ Abandoning speech and too many unnecessary movements. Now, unnecessary or deliberate talking during Salah is impermissible, even just a little bit. But of course, there are exceptions, and the ulama excuse a speech when one is trying to prevent some serious danger, like a blind man, for example, walking towards a pit, or a child doing something that can cause serious injuries. In such instances, one can say something while in Salah, but even at that exception, it shouldn't be a lengthy talk. More than five words break your salah with us. Uh, nakedness for men and for a slave woman is considered to be what is between the navels and the knees. And there are many hadith alluding to this. Ma bayna surratin wa kurbah. Aura, uh, what is between the navel and the knee is nakedness. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam has said, and this is not only for salah, but in general, it is considered reprehensible for male to look or see another male's thigh, uh, and likewise sister to sister. And this does not include the knee and the navel. What is nakedness is what's between these two. نعم وحرة عورة إلا الوجه والكفة فنجها لذاك نجها. And nakedness for a free woman is everything except for her face and hands. And by hands, uh, not the arm, just the hands. And our poet says, addressing the males, فنجها لذاك نجها. Uh, so save yourself from that. Uh, in a language we all understand, lower your gaze from such, flee. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zuyina lin nasi hubba shahawati minan nisa. Beautified for people is the love of that which they desire of women. So there's no tough guy when it comes to that department. So lower your gaze. So all of a female is aura except for her hands and face. وَفِي السَّرَاوِرِ الصَّلَاةُ تُقْرَهُ إِلَّا لِثَوْبِ فَوْقَهُ فَيُمْدَهُ And praying with trousers is disliked, except if there is a garment over it which spreads out, preferably. I would assume that uh, this makes or made uh, better sense in lands where no one really wore pants. Uh, in our lands, there's nothing wrong with uh, praying with pants, but uh, some conditions apply. Extremely tight pants, which exposes your shape and property uh, are beyond any doubt reprehensible in or out of salah. It's better to have a covering over over the pants. وَمَنْ تَنَجَّسَ ثَوْبَهُ وَعَجَزَ عَنْ غَيْرِهِ أَوْ خَافَ وَقْتًا اجْتَزَ A person whose garment becomes dirty and he's unable to change it or he fears that prayer time may run out, he should just pray. So he or she prays with that dirty garment anyway. The ulama view prayer more important than dirty clothes. 
ولم يجوز تأخيرها لعدم الطهارة وهو به ذو معثم It is not permissible to delay prayer due to lack of clean clothes. Doing so is sinful. وَصَلِّ عُرْيَانًا إِذَا لَمْ تُلْفِي سَاتِرًا عَوْرَةٍ بِغَيْرِ خُلْفِي He prays naked if he does not find anything to cover nakedness with. And this is by consensus within the madhab. Now, aura nakedness is of two types. There is what is known as aura tul mughalladha and aura tul mukhaffafa. Aura tul mughalladha is the more serious nakedness, absolute nudity. It is what is known by all people to be nakedness, not just the Muslims. Uh, none of this should be exposed in salah if a person has the ability to cover it, even if it's by dirty clothes. And Aurat al-Mukhaffafa is nakedness, but not as serious as Mughallava. Uh, these are things such as hair for sisters. So if a sister, for example, was wearing some shady clothes, hoping to be back at home in time for Salah, but unfortunately, this time for prayer caught up with her. And she doesn't have decent clothes to cover herself. She prays anyway, even if she doesn't have a scarf to cover her hair. And of course, it's better for her to repeat that salah within its time when she reaches home or finds uh, proper covering. Or men, when they bow, sometimes uh, their nice fashionable t-shirts go up and they expose the back. This doesn't break salah, but it's better not to put yourself in such a position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya bani Adam khudhu zinatakum inda kulli masjid Beautify yourself at every masjid Generally it's advisable and always better to wear good clothes in and out of salah and to look nice for haddartul qudus for divine presence So lento yuktana zanga ama pijama and ama overall I don't know Naam, the poet carries on وَالْمُخْتِئُ الْقِبْلَةِ فِي الْوَقْتِ أَعَادُ وَمُحْتَحَبُ كُلَّ مَا فِيهِ يُعَادُ If one makes an error regarding the qibla while time remains, meaning he faces a wrong direction, and there's still enough time to pray, it is recommended that he repeats his salah, but it's not an obligation. For example, you visit a friend and he leaves you in a place, and while he's out doing whatever, you decide to pray. And when he, you finish, he walks in and he shows you the correct qibla. If there's enough time, waqtul ada, it is good uh, that you repeat your salah facing the correct qibla, but it's, it's, uh, it's not an obligation. Another thing worth mentioning, however, it has a lot to do with adab. When you are visiting a place, you must ask the people of that house or place to show you the qibla instead of Weeping out your fancy mobile device trying to find the Qibla because you are the only one in the world who prays. Uh, poor Adab. Uh, that's like asking another Muslim if the food he's offering you is halal. Very disrespectful. Unless, of course, you know Ugutu Brada now, Matata Zonke. But even at that, you eat what you have no doubt about and you leave the rest without any making any intelligent comments. Likewise, when the people of the house or the place show you a qibla, that's the qibla, just pray. وَمَا يُعَادُ الْفَرْدُ مِنْهُ فِيهِ لَا يُعِدْ بِهِ الْفَائِتَ وَالتَّنَفُّلَ He repeats the obligatory prayers in its time, and if he is mistaken with the qibla, but uh, as mentioned, it's merely a recommendation, not an obligation. لَا يُعِدْ بِهِ الْفَائِتَ وَالتَّنَفُّلَ but he does not repeat it if uh, the time has elapsed, meaning the prayer time has elapsed, and he does not repeat the nawafil, the optional prayers. Naam, we stop here. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyata wal-ma'afata al-da'imata fi al-dinina wa dunyana wa ahlina wa amwalina. اللهم استر عوراتنا وامن روعاتنا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب والدوائها وعافية الأبدان والشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وقوت الأرواح وغذائها وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين